This is Mark Seibel for McClatchy Newspapers. For the past three weeks, oil has been gushing from a pipe 5,000 feet below the surface of the Gulf of Mexico, raising fears that oil will contaminate seafood, kill wildlife, and ruin the beaches of five states where tourism is a big industry. But the Gulf of Mexico right now is only fearing the impact of oil contamination. In many parts of the world, it's already happened. For those people, what's taking place in the Gulf may be a catastrophe, but it may also awaken Americans to the real cost of oil. Take Alberta, Canada. Residents there already can't eat the fish they catch near their homes. The wind reeks of oil waste. At least 200 square miles of wildlife habitat have been ruined in northern Alberta, where oil companies are mining tar-like sands, converting them to crude, and piping 830,000 barrels a day south to the United States. The people who live in Alberta, most of them from indigenous tribes, have complained for years about pollution, illness, and the destruction of wildlife habitat. In Ecuador, the damage has been going on for a long time too, about 40 years. Thousands of miles of jungle streams and wetland zones have been polluted, and the people of the Ecuadorian Amazon have sued, demanding that the oil companies clean up the pools of oil drilling waste that have been left behind. Esperanza Martinez, Ecuador coordinator for Oil Watch, an international environmental group, says that 2.5 million acres of rainforest have been destroyed and that cancer rates among the people living in the development zone are 30 percent higher than the rates for people living elsewhere. In Africa's Niger Delta, there are more than 2,000 polluted sites that need cleaning. Nigeria is the fourth largest source of foreign oil for the United States. The pollution affects fisheries, agriculture, and human health. Environmentalists say life expectancy is lowest in communities where oil is produced. And last year, Amnesty International published a report on the Niger Delta saying oil spills, waste dumping, and gas flaring are endemic. In each of these countries, the oil industry says the problems are manageable, and that in any case, the world needs the oil. The people most affected say they've largely given up. The damage they suffer is slow and steady, not big and dramatic, like what we're seeing in the Gulf. As long as the world needs the oil, they don't expect things to change. I'm Mark Seibel for McClatchy Newspapers.